Northgate Mall. You break the law, step in and baptize him and get on out. <laughs> Baptism doesn't save you, but it initiates the relationship that you're going to have with Jesus Christ. Amen. It starts with baptism, and there are so many people who have come, and the relationship hasn't started because between them coming and them being baptized, Amen. the enemy stepped in. Yeah. Here's what Philip did. The Bible says they both got out of the chariot. Say both. 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 Together. One to one. They both went down into the water. Say both. 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 Because Philip was the one who was going to baptize. And the eunuch was the one being baptized. God was using both of them. Just like God wants to use you. There's somebody out there that needs guidance. There's somebody out there that needs direction. And God has empowered you with information, with instructions on how to help people get to the next level. Don't deny yourself or God the opportunity to win people to Christ because you're not comfortable. Mm. Because you're not confident. There are a lot of people who will miss the opportunity because we're not where we need to be. Amen. Philip was in the right place at the right time. Philip was doing what God purposed in his life to do. And as a result of that, Philip not only changed the life of many, but now Philip is about to change the life of one man. They go down in the water together. The Bible says, and if you remember this, it's the same. He baptized him. Remember in Matthew 3, Jesus and John went down in the water. And John baptized him. The Bible says... And while after they baptized them, they both came up out of the water. But God, through the Holy Spirit, took Philip away. Mm. And the man didn't see him leave and didn't know where he went. Wow. You know why? Because it wasn't about Philip. If after he had been baptized, he would have looked to Philip instead of Christ. That's right. As ambassadors for God, we got to stop making it about us. It's got to be about Jesus. See, he would have made Philip his pastor. Kid. And you know how we love the pastor. But the problem that we have is we put too much emphasis and too much focus on the pastor. Amen. It should be on Jesus. Amen. The lesson that we learned today is that when you're baptized, you don't have to just call on the pastor. You don't have to call on people in the church. You now have access to the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that opportunity and relationship, you got to know how to use what God has given you as a resource to help you get through whatever you're dealing with. You don't believe me? I'm getting to my end. I know it's time, but I just want to set the stage. He takes him away because his assignment is complete. He's baptized. He's walking in his relationship. Remember now, he's a eunuch. He's got power. He's got money. He's got authority. Amen. But on this trip, he realized he was missing something. And I need for you to see how God brought him to where he needed to be and provided him what he needed. He didn't need more money. He didn't need more houses. He didn't need a better job. He didn't need more friends. Watch what God gives him as a result of his desire. Listen to the text. And the Bible says in verse number 39, and when they would come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, and that, that the eunuch saw him no more. Here it is. And he went on his way, rejoicing. God gave him what his money couldn't buy. God gave him what his job couldn't give him. God gave him what his position couldn't give him. God gave him joy. And his joy is in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, my joy, I leave with you. So if you really want to know how to be happy, it's in Jesus Christ. If you really want to be excited about life, then you ought to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you really want to know what true happiness is, open up your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior.
He's happy now. The word joy, here, rejoicing means he's celebrating. He had to go down a lonely road. He had to go down by the pool in order to get to where God wanted him to be. God's going to use you to help somebody else. But God needs you to be a student of the word. God needs for you to learn how to be obedient to what he's saying to you. So that you can help your children. So that you can help your grandchildren. So that you can help your neighbor. You can help your friend. You can help your mama. You can help your dad. You can't help them get to where God wants them to be if you don't have a relationship with God yourself. Amen. Your first step is to ask yourself, where am I with God? Mm -hmm. Before you ask God to do something miraculous in your life, find out where the break point is. If your faith is not where it needs to be, how do you expect God to move? The healing is there, you just can't see it. The deliverance is there, you just don't know it. The promotion is there, you just don't know how to identify it. Because you don't have the faith that it requires to see it in the spirit realm. It's already been spoken in heaven, it's released on earth, but you can't find it because you're drifting. You are wandering. And the Bible teaches us that God has a plan for your life. But you won't know what the plan is if you have no relationship with him. Amen. How are you going to go and withdraw money from an account that don't have your name on it? How do you expect to get the blessings of the Lord if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life? Amen. God is saying to us today, somebody's got to show us the way. The path is being open for you. If you learn from this unit, it doesn't matter how the path looks. What you want is the end result. God will bless you on the path if you're following the path that he chose for you. Even if it's a desolate place, God will provide. Even if you have everything you think you need, you'll find more in God. I don't want you to leave here without being blessed according to God's will for your life. Amen. But in order for you to get there, you have to know Jesus. You have to know Christ. You have to believe in the Son of God. Amen. That's going to open the way for you to receive all that God has for you. Amen. Sometimes we say stuff that other people say and don't realize how it works. Amen. What God has for you, it is for you. No devil in hell can rob you of it. But it can be delayed because of your lack of faith. Amen. The question is, you don't see it. The text doesn't provide it. But this is the introduction of the plan of salvation. Hear and believe. Confess and repent. To be baptized. It's the plan of salvation. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God is showing this eunuch and Philip what the plan of salvation will be. He's giving them a snapshot because he wants those that would not be invited to be a part of the household of faith to really understand the purpose for which they've been called and it's not to be included in a group or a club, it's to be in a relationship with God. Because at that point, the Jews had made it about being a club Come over here and be with us, and you're going to have all these privileges. Well, who wants to be a part of another club? Being a part of a club ain't helping me. I need something more. I need answers. I need to know somebody that's a problem solver. I need to know somebody that is a solution, who has solutions to my problems. And his name is? Everybody stand sure today that it was a text that he wanted to be preached. 
because there's somebody here who needs guidance. There's somebody here who needs direction. You're trying to get to the next step, trying to get to the next season, trying to get to the next phase in your life. And you've come part of the way, but you can't make it the rest of the way because there's some missing things that are going to help you get there. And, and unfortunately, you don't know what those things look like. So God chose this message for you today. You are here by divine purpose. And God wants to move you to the next level. And so the message for you today is God wants to show you the way. He wants to order your steps. He wants to provide direction. And the word of God declares that all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. The word also tells us that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Today you have the privilege of knowing what the Word of God means to you. It opens the way for you to know God, but more importantly, to receive and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Nobody knows all of the answers, but the answer today is Jesus. You will not know all the problems that you're going to encounter for the rest of your life, but because God has a plan for your life, and God has a purpose for your life, he wants to provide everything that you need today to be able to endure and survive what it is that you're going to endure. And I don't want you to leave here with any questions in your mind of how you're going to get to the next phase, how you're going to get to the next season, how you're going to deal with the next issue. The answer is clear. Jesus Christ is the answer. Not Church of the Living God, not Pastor Tate, not Evangelist Kelly, Evangelist Thorpe, Evangelist Pinkerton, Evangelist Tate, Minister uh, uh, Brazil, Evangelist this, Missionary that. No, Jesus Christ is the answer. How could a man who was empty be full? Jesus. How could a man that is scarred and be restored? Jesus. How could a man that is broken be repaired? Jesus. Wherever you are today, wherever you're going to, whatever the issue, whatever the problem, whatever the need, you'll find a solution in Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray today that you receive that word. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, look out of praise. Join hands with somebody right where you are. Just join hands. Join hands. Spirit of the living God, there's somebody here that is in need of direction. They're on a lonely road. They assume that that road is not leading them to anywhere, but it's the road that you designed for their lives. You isolated them, God, for a reason. You took them off the main road so that you could get their attention. Today's text tells us that you're going to send somebody to help guide us and lead us back to the main road. I want to thank you in advance for what you're getting ready for, to do for them. Just as you did for me. Just as you did for everybody in this room. You open a way out of no way. I thank you today for opening doors that no man can close and closing doors that no man can open. Today somebody's heart needs to be changed. To say today somebody's purpose needs to be exposed. Today somebody's heart needs to be fixed. The mind needs to be regulated and made up. Today somebody needs to repent and confess. Ask for forgiveness. And the word has been declared one to one. Show me the way, God. Show me what I've done wrong. Show me the error of my ways. And then send me the direction and the path that I need to follow to get back to the right relationship with you. Today is a good day. And we thank you in advance for what you've done for us and what you've been ready to do. Touch your deliver as you see fit. Let our faith increase as a result of the word that has been released. We promise to give you all the glory and all the time. And the master's name of Jesus, we pray.
Clap those hands and give God praise in this house. Somebody, somebody needs 